I bet you like saving money, and I bet you like nice things just like I do, right? So today, I'm going to show you how to save money and get nice things. A two-for-one deal, if you will. There's one particular skill that I come back to time and time and time again when I go outdoors. And as my experiences grow, I'm always repairing gear or I'm getting new gear, but I don't like how things come because often things come pretty cheap and it's not of the high quality that can withstand the ruggedness of outdoor adventure. So I've grown to adapt and I've learned how to make my own items. And this goes really far in saving you money so you can get better gear and more gear and uh, you know, just get outside and be safe about it, right? We spend a lot of money on our things and we wanna make sure that they're protected. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make patterns. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a pattern for a knife, if it's a pattern for an ax, whatever it is, the premise is pretty much the same when it comes to making sheaths or masks. Now, a mask, if you may not know, is something that goes on the front of the head of an ax, like this, so this is a mask. A sheath is something that slides into it, like this knife sheath. The knife slides into the sheath. So there is a difference between a sheath and a knife. But again, the skill I'm gonna show you today can be applied either or. Let's go ahead and get started. Gonna need paper. It doesn't need to be really fancy paper, but we're gonna start out with just basic copy paper. You'll need a ruler. It's nice to have a square if you have it and a pencil. You'll also need whatever item it is that you're making the sheath or mask for. Now there's lots of different types of sheaths and masks. And depending on your style and your preference and uh, what you have in your ability really can dictate what you're going to do. This sheath, for example, is because I had to make something really quick. I was going to camp out with my scouts, so I just used rivets. I did not get too fancy with, I didn't do a lot of stitching, but rivets will do the job. And I also didn't even put a welt in here. A welt is a middle piece in between two other pieces of leather. And that's really important with edge tools. Now, because of the ax and the, the size of it, I knew that I wasn't gonna break through these rivets, so I wasn't too worried about it. And uh, it's gonna be on my hip. It's not likely that the ax would hit those rivets and ding the, the blade at all. So. That's what I did here for an expedient need. This on the other hand is something I took a lot of time and care for and it has served me for the past four or five years out in the woods and I love the durability of the sheath. Now when it comes to a mask, again, there's lots of different styles and methods. You can be as simple as this, which is literally just something that you can pop right in. I like this size because you can put it in your pocket. There is some that have a tail that goes over top, which is nice if you're wanting to protect all of it. Um, I like the idea of just being able to take off a mask and put it in my pocket and move on. So that's the style of mask that I use. Now, when it comes to pattern making, there's a couple rules of thumb that you can use. Traditionally, you want three eighths around whatever the cutting edge is. Now, if you're not into math, and if you're just starting out, going up to a half inch is perfectly fine. That's what I used to do all the time. Uh, but then as I got used to it, and I got more refined in my skill, uh, I started doing the three eighths. So we're gonna actually make a pattern for this ax here. We're gonna take our ax, we're gonna put it smack dab in the center. We're gonna make a couple reference marks, just in case something moves around, we can rely back on these reference marks to adjust. Then we're going to include some of our handle and we're just going to trace the item. If it's a knife, axe, doesn't matter. Okay. Now we're going to set our axe off to the side so there are some measurements that we're going to need from it. Take your ruler. The rule of thumb is three eighths of an inch all in front of the cutting edge for your welt. So we're going to go ahead and mark three eighths, various points. The more ticks that you make, the easier it is to connect the dots.
We're also going to do it down here. Oops, I think I accidentally marked it a half inch. Some of these. Okay, now it's all about connecting the dots. Now rule, another tip. If you take your ax, and you should be able to kind of follow the curvature and use this as a guide. There we go. Now, whenever you have a point here, make sure to round it off because leather will chip away just like wood. So we don't want any tear points or points that could be easily damaged. So we're going to round that off there. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit more over here. All right. Now, for this part here, we have to take the measurement on the back side of the axe to see what the width is. So it's one inch. So we need a strap that's going to be one inch down here. And while we're there, may as well see uh, how thick it is. So it's about a half inch. Easy math. So down here, we're going to make a one inch strap by half inch. One inch, grab my square. Flip it around. Then do it again. And we double check. All right, it's about right. Okay, now there's a, a thicker part back here that we ought to have to take into consideration. So this should be the same size, double check. So it's again one inch. So we need to come out and make a one inch rectangle right here. This is why a square is handy to have in these circumstances. Go ahead down there. Okay, good. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and mark that up as well. Okay, so this is going to go underneath the hatchet to support it, and this over here is going to be on the back of the hatchet. Lastly, we need to just draw a nice straight line. Take it from that point, give you some grace over here. Beautiful. All right. So there we have our pattern for the sheath. Now, we also have to consider a flap. So we're going to actually cut this out, trim it up a little bit, make it nice and neat, create another pattern off of this that we're going to include the flap. I forgot to mention real quick that I went ahead and drew a straight line here just to, as a reference point. And then I knew I kind of wanted it to be curved to give it a nice look here. So I went ahead and I sketched that in. If you're not very good at sketching or you just don't like it, you can also use something around you, like an ice cream lid, to get a nice, sharp, defined line, if that's your style. But uh, we're going to go ahead, cut this out, and we're gonna apply it, and we're gonna have our flap on the next one. If you've liked this video and it's been of use to you at all, if you found it interesting, please click like, that way other people find it and it helps them out as well. You'd be doing them a great favor.
Now that we have our pattern all cut out, I'm going to lay it on top of another paper. And I'll tell you, if you have construction paper, construction paper is definitely the preferred paper to use for pattern making or a thicker uh, paper bag, something like that. But I figure everybody's pretty much got access to printer paper or notebook paper. But thicker paper will make your life a lot easier when it comes to this. There we go. Okay, good. Covered everything. Now there's a few marks that we're going to make on the second pattern just so we're aware of where things are. I'm going to put a mark there. I'm going to put a mark there. And from here to there, we're going to reinforce that straight line. Referencing the tab at the bottom, and our mark that we made up at the top. There we go. Because now we're going to create a flap for our axe sheath. So down here, we're going to come up about, uh, I think, an inch. Yeah, I think an inch. I like an inch. Same thing over here. Double check. It's a little short. Okay. Now you can use something like an ice cream container lid or other lid. Um, this is actually pretty wide, so we might have to play with your pattern a little bit, depending on the kind of arc that you're really wanting to go for. This, I think, is going to be too shallow of an arc, so I'm going to get something else. All right, so I found a coffee lid. I think that's what we're going to use. So we're going to make sure that our mark on this side is seen and just basically kiss the mark on this side. There we go. I like that a lot better. Okay, so this is going to be our flap. Now, depending on what you're going to make your sheath out of, if it's going to be leather and you don't want to deal with stitching or riveting, and you have plenty of leather. Having a one-piece sheath like this is really nice. As you can see over here, I didn't even rivet. This is all just one piece of leather. The, uh, the only piece that was added was the welt. Now, if you have that much leather, then this is the way to do it. It's uh, less points of fail. To make this type of sheath, you're going to take your pattern, and you're going to make it bigger. So you're going to basically take your pattern, just like so, on a larger sheet of paper, match them up, and then you have your one-piece sheath. And you may want to draw your tab on here as well. But really, that is all there is to it. Now, if we uh, cut this out and we were to put it on leather, we're going to sandwich these pieces together. Now you'd want to cut a piece of welt. There's two ways to do that with leather working. You can transfer this shape onto a piece of leather. You can cut it out and that could be your welt. Another option is cutting a straight piece and then when it comes here to the sharp corners, you cut darts with your little triangles into the leather and then you wet it and you form it and you let it dry. And those darts will allow it to make that sharp corner. So it depends on what your level of skill is and what you really want to do and how much leather that you want to use when it comes to these type of patterns. So there is your basic axe pattern. And what about a mask? Mask is really simple. So again, you take your axe, you put it in front, you're going to trace it. If it's a double bit axe like this one, you only even need to do one side, but we're going to trace all of it over here. Now with mass, you basically want one third of it covered. And you can eyeball that, so we're going to go ahead and just say it's about yay. And 
and we can double check, make sure our math matches for the other side. So we have about one inch right there. One inch is about one third for that as well. All right, we're good. Okay, now we're gonna make our one third, I'm sorry, our three eighths mark all the way around again. So one. Okay, and just like before, all we're doing is we're just gonna connect the dots. And again, you wanna make sure that this is nice and curved. You don't want any sharp points over here. So that we just do the same thing. We're gonna cut this part out and uh, we're gonna double it. Now, if you're making a mask, like for an axe like this, and you want something across from it, that's simple as well. You're just going to take your straight line, put it all the way through, like so, and you can give yourself some shape. Oftentimes, people will come up like so, at this point, just as a reference, and you take your lid or something to give it some coolness. It's a little bit of rounded. It's easier on the eyes. Looks pretty good, like so. And uh, now we can cut this out just along that right there, and we probably want to block this off right about that point because it's behind the head and uh, we can cut this out and now you have your mask well isn't that a nice skill to have right i mean it seems kind of basic and there's some nuance with masks versus sheaths sheaths are actually a little bit easier uh, because there's a little bit more forgiveness when it comes to masks it's not terribly hard i'm not saying it's difficult but you do have to realize that when you make a mask, it's not just something that you're gonna put over and uh, tie it around, because if you do that, then it could flop one way or the other. So with a mask, when it comes down here, the beard of the ax, if you will, you want to be able to slide in and kind of hook into it. And then you have a string or maybe a, a clasp or something like that that goes around the pole and keeps it on there. So it's good and tight and it's not gonna fall off. Whereas the sheath, you're just dropping it in. The most complicated part is figuring out exactly how are you going to seal it. I love the friction fits myself, but you know, using a tie like this is simple. And if you're really into it, you can make a buckle and a strap. Whatever your choice is, you know, there's a lot of freedom in that. But if you're just starting out, just using a tie like this is super easy. You can't go wrong. Punch a couple holes, tie around it, and you're good to go. Okay. Now, if you like this video, please click like, that way other people find it. It helps them out. You'll be doing them a massive favor. If you have no interest in making your own patterns, well, I made your life a little bit easier. I'm actually selling uh, all my different patterns that I have for my axes in one place. That way it saves you time, saves you energy. You can send me an email and I'll send it to you in a PDF so you can print it out. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, makes it really easy. Now it costs $15 and you get all the patterns for all the different axes that I have and even comes with some of my masks. But uh, you, know, you can adapt that to your own style if you want. You can compare it or especially since uh, the hatches tend to be more traditional size versus like the Kephart, then it's there for you. So send me an email, it's $15 and I'll send you a PDF your way. Please check out my website, www honorableoutfitters.com because on there I have historical articles. I also try to uh, put my affiliate links on there. And if you're interested in any of the tools that I use today, please check out my description box below. I have my affiliate links down there to help you out, make your life a little bit easier. Now, make sure to subscribe because next week I'm actually going to show you how to make this mask and some variations of it. It's pretty sweet and uh, 
you know, me showing you and walking you through it because putting it on paper is one thing, but actually showing you some of the nuances about it, there's a little bit more to it. So that's what next week's video is going to be about. Now, a while ago, I did a video about the differences in ax grinds and stuff. If you're interested in learning more about hatchets and their particular uses, then you want to check out this video here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.